to the 51st annual commencement at Penn State Hazleton. At this time, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. We ask that families remain in their seats through the duration of the ceremony. Masks should be worn at all times. Now, will everyone please stand as we are about to begin the procession. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Welcome to Penn State Hazelton. My name is Barbara Brazen, Assistant Teaching Professor of Information Sciences and Technology. I am the President of the Faculty Senate at Penn State Hazelton and the Faculty Marshal for this graduation ceremony. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podium the Chancellor of Penn State Hazleton, Dr. Gary M. Lawler. Good morning. And welcome to the Hazleton campus of the Pennsylvania State University, celebrating the class of 2021 in the first two rows and our 51st commencement ceremony on this campus. If you've ever been to one of our commencement ceremonies, they're usually quite a bit different. Usually on a Friday night in the gym with a lot more room for guests. Well, nothing about this past year has been usual. To get as many people present as we could, according to university and CDC guidelines, we decided to plan this outdoor event because it was so important to us to graduate and to graduate and congratulate the students you see before you in person. A moment for the students. Thank you all 
for your determination and resiliency in completing your Penn State degree. Before March 2020, we never expected to have the word Zoom quite as prevalent in our speech as we do today. In the past year, many of you were in person, many of you were partially in person, and some of you were completely remote. This was a challenge for you and also for our faculty in adapting their courses to meet the mode of instruction and your personal needs. They stepped up and then so did you. Thank you for your understanding that your Penn State degree was worth the extra effort within a difficult time. You masked and socially distanced when you were on campus, responded to calls for extra testing, and for the most part, stayed safe. This is my 14th year at Penn State Hazleton, and I'm sure that this commencement will be the one that I remember the most. The team putting this all together, headed by Dr. Maggie Gordon Froelich, had to rethink everything we usually do and pivot to a whole new approach to make it work. Everything from the tent to the seating had to be changed. We thought it best not to drive any tent stakes through a water line. So we learned much more about the infrastructure under the soccer field than we ever knew before. <laughs> and that's a good thing. In many ways, this pivot parallels those pivots we needed to learn and adapt in our own lives throughout the pandemic. We needed to adapt, find new approaches, and while we did not worry about tents per se, we worried about keeping our families safe inside our homes. Our computer skills came in handy when it came time to search for a vaccine. Suddenly, once again, our social networks became far more important in hearing where vaccinations were available. And for some, of course, no good, good deed goes unturned. There were those pesky side effects. Today, perhaps for the next hour, we can put the pandemic aside and focus on these tremendous Penn State graduates that we have with us today. This has been an exciting year at Penn State Hazleton. We are poised for significant growth. We now have 13 baccalaureate degrees on campus, including our newest degree in computer science. We awarded over $1 million in scholarships to our students with greater and exciting more monies going to be available next year. We are in a capital campaign, a greater Penn State for 21st century excellence. With a year to go in the campaign, we have raised $5.9 million of our $6 million goal. While we expect to meet our goal shortly, we will still not meet the student need. The university is laser focused on the areas of access and affordability. The need will march on and so will we. We completed a, uh, this year a renewal of the Lofstrom Library, a $7.5 million project to bring our library far into the 21st century. The building now has six collaboration spaces for students to work together, two maker spaces, a math tutoring center, a career closet, a one-button studio to record and review presentations, and of course, we kept many of the books. The original building built in the 70s had skinny, skinny window slits that did not much, let much light in. Now on two sides of the building, we have window walls that let the natural light flow freely into the spaces. We have also expanded our presence in downtown Hazleton at the Hazleton Launch Box, supported by Pasco L. Shivo Esquire, a dear friend of the campus. The Launch Box is an entrepreneurial space for students and community members to generate a business, incubate or accelerate a new business, and get help from our professional staff. Even though the physical space was closed, we took our message to the people via technology, locally, regionally, and internationally. The response has been tremendously exciting. This year marks the 87th anniversary of bringing quality higher education to the Hazleton region. We continue to strive to deliver the land grant mission of teaching, research, and outreach that was the vision of the university founders back in 1855. 
I hope that you enjoy this day and moment of celebration. Your willingness to support our vision and our students helps to create a legacy that will take us far into the future. Thank you for joining us today, and please continue to be an important part of our campus. We are Penn State. It is my pleasure to introduce Penn State Students Government Association President, James Walsh, to the podium. James? Thank you, Dr. Lawler. Good morning, everybody. At the end of each semester, the Student Government Association president is asked to speak to the graduating students. Although I am only a sophomore and have not gone through, gone through what you have, I'm aware of the grit and determination it takes to complete half of a program, let alone the amount it takes to complete an entire degree. It is no small order, and you all deserve to celebrate and let your achievements soak in during the coming weeks. Although your time as a student here at Penn State Hazleton may be over, that does not mean you should stop learning and growing as a person. Whether you are continuing into higher education or not, I encourage you all to become lifelong learners. A lot of people graduate college, settle into a certain job, and become comfortable whether, they are, whether or not they are actually happy with it. They stop growing as a person and as a learner. I urge you to do the opposite. Keep learning and keep growing until the day that you die and never settle for a job, career, or relationship that you are not truly happy with. I also encourage you all to use your out of the classroom experiences to your advantage. Whether you're involved in clubs such as student government, line ambassadors, or THON, or you were a part of a sports team, remember the experiences you had working with others or as a leader, as those experiences cannot be forgotten and they will most definitely serve you well in the future. Before you enter the next phase of your life, I encourage you to reflect on your time here at Penn State and to soak in everything before moving on. Whether you have realized it yet or not, a major chapter of your life has just closed, but this is still just the beginning. The feeling of finally being done with school and now officially being thrust in the real world may be a bit overwhelming to some, and it's something I myself stress about. But you all made it this far, and I'm confident that you now all have the wherewithal and the strength that you need to be successful going forward. You have all done what it takes to acquire a Penn State degree and have undoubtedly acquired lifelong skills that will propel you into the future along the way. I admire you all, and I send you my best wishes into the future, and I hope you stay safe and are able to celebrate a bit this summer before moving on to the next chapter of your life. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Dr. Maggie Gordon Froelich, Associate Director of Academic Affairs and Associate Professor of English and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Dr. Froelich. Thank you, Dr. Lawler. Good morning. Will the candidates for associate degrees please rise? Dr. Lawler, I have the honor to present these candidates and to report that in the judgment of the faculty, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all of the requirements for these degrees. May I present the candidates for the degree? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President and the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I hereby confer upon you an associate degree, and I welcome you to all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. The candidate for the associate in science degree in business is Michelle Hackenberg. The candidate for the Associate in Science degree in Information Sciences and Technology is Christian D. Myers. The 
the candidates for the Associate in Science degree in Physical Therapist Assistant are Erica Adamchak. Cassidy Sue Buser. Mark Chapman. Alexa Rose Clark. <laughs> Brianna Ray Clark. Laura Elizabeth Dorsey. <laughs> Madison Felty. <laughs> Michael Anthony. Hudson. <laughs> Mitchell Lacerda. Casey Lynn Lighty. <laughs> Abigail G. Majeski. Maria Noel Muntz. <laughs> Kevin Ogarzalek. Garrett James William Rokoski. Adam Spett. Shannon Stewart. <laughs> Brian Richard Thomas. <laughs> Hannah May. Oh, <laughs> Abigail Weaver. Jacora Witherspoon. <laughs> Thank 
Christiane Yoder. We would now like to recognize those graduating with associate degrees in absentia. Megan Amanda Hauser. <laughs> Bailey Leslie. And Juan Ortiz. Please join me in congratulating all associate degree candidates. At this time, I would like to welcome to the podium Dr. Elizabeth J. Wright, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Commonwealth Campuses, and Director of Academic Affairs, Penn State Hazleton, and Associate Professor of English for the presentation of baccalaureate candidates. Thank you, Dr. Gordon Froelich. Would the candidates for the baccalaureate degree please rise? <laughs> Dr. Lawler, I have the honor to present these candidates and to report that in the judgment of the faculty, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all of the requirements for these degrees. May I present the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President and the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I hereby confer upon you a bachelor's degree, and I welcome you to all of the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. The candidate for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Administration of Justice is Lexi L. Kenny. Candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Corporate Communication are Dominic M. Lamont. <laughs> we found you. <laughs> but, uh, no worries. And then up next, we have Anthony Lewis Salazar, Jr. The candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Arts degree in Letters, Arts, and Sciences is Camille Nicole Principe. <laughs> Dr. Lawler, I have to tell you, I'm really enjoying the birds out here this year. The, I just had to say, the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology are Andrew James Weitzel. And next we have Dominika Zandrovich. All right, engineering, let's do this. The candidate for the Bachelor of Science degree in engineering, first we have Daniel Joseph Galfi. <laughs> and 
and Colin Knoll. The candidate for the Bachelor of Science degree in Administration of Justice is Elizabeth Madursky. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Business are Mackenzie Joy. Owen R. Klingeman. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Matyas. <laughs> Alfonso. Penilla <laughs> Carlos Jean Pierre Torres <laughs> Michael Witzak, Jr. Candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Information Sciences and Technology are Mohammed Babji. <laughs> Carlos E. Colon Castillo. Jacob Dermer. <laughs> Kaylin Henderson. <laughs> Anush Ayer. Yugandar Mankar. William Matthew Moses. Stephen Rafael Santiago Perez. And John Ray. The candidate for the Bachelor of Science degree in Project and Supply Chain Manage Management is Lauren Emily Gober. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology are Abby L. Besswar. and Megan Elizabeth Hudock. The 
candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Rehabilitation and Human Services are Aaron Dull. <laughs> Jennifer Fisher. Amanda Montz. And Samantha Shamansky. Point, we'd like to recognize those graduating with bachelor's degrees. You okay, Rose? In absentia. Careful. Uh, Sean Coley. Sachit Hegde. Lee Michael Pliska. Silvio Alejandro. Alejandro Reyes. Liz Debbie Rosa de Aza. Lynn Karen Rosa de Aza. Maricel Velasquez. David S. Wanter II. and Brian Patrick Zimmon. At this point, I'd like to recognize students who have earned highest honors in their coursework. Graduation with distinction is an honor bestowed on graduates by the university based on their cumulative grade point average. Penn State University bestows this special recognition on the top 12% in each college. We then divide that 12% into the following. The top 2% graduate summa cum laude. The next 4% in the college graduate magna cum laude. And the final 6% graduate cum laude. We mark this distinction with cords. And so students who are graduating summa cum laude are wearing a blue and white cord. Those graduating magna cum laude are wearing a blue cord. And the students graduating cum laude are wearing a white cord. Will the students graduating summa cum laude all please rise and remain standing as I call your names. And you are Catherine Elizabeth Matthias, and Anthony Lewis Salazar, Jr. Truly an amazing accomplishment. Now, will those graduating with cum laude all please rise and remain standing as I announce their names? And they are Michelle Hackenberg, Anush Ayer, Yugandar Mankar, Amanda Mons. Garrett James William Rakoski. And we also recognize Maricel Velasquez, who is graduating cum laude in absentia. Great job, everybody. Congratulations again. You guys can sit down. And best wishes for your continuing excellence. At this time, we'd like, like to recognize um, two additional CORD members. These are our graduates who have been recognized for military service. And you may have noticed that they are wearing honor cords of red, white, and blue. Would you please stand and be recognized? You are Dominic M. Lamont. <laughs> and Amanda Montz.
we thank you for your service. And at this point, can I ask for everyone to congratulate all of our graduates, baccalaureate and associate degree. Well done, graduates. And now we welcome Dr. Froelich back to the podium to announce this year's Costas Awards. Dr. Froelich. Thank you. It is my pleasure to announce this year's winners of the Frank C. Costas Award. This award honors the late Frank C. Costas, who ended a 27-year affiliation with Penn State Hazleton when he retired as campus director in 1973. It was established by the Hazleton Educational Council, the Campus Advisory Board. This award is made annually to three students as follows. To the full-time student with the highest grade point average in Penn State coursework and enrolled in a baccalaureate degree program at the end of the sophomore year. To the full-time Penn State Hazleton baccalaureate degree student with the highest grade point average in Penn State coursework who intends to graduate. And finally, to the full-time Penn State Hazleton associate degree student with the highest grade point average in Penn State coursework who intends to graduate. The Costas Award consists of a cash award and a replica of the Nittany Lion. This year's recipients received their awards earlier this week. I ask the following to please rise and remain standing to be recognized when your name is called. The Penn State Baccalaureate degree recipient is Laura Matias. Lauren Matias for business. The Penn State Hazleton Baccalaureate degree recipient is Anthony Lewis Salazar, Jr., who is graduating with a degree in corporate communication. The Penn State Hazleton Associate degree recipient is Michelle Hackenberg, who is graduating with a degree in business. Congratulations to our Costas Award winners. At this time, Assistant Teaching Professor of Information Sciences and Technology, Barbara Brazen, will in introduce our guest speaker. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Krista Schneider. Krista currently leads the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, a nonprofit which has infused $6 million into the Downtown Hazleton. Her fundraising efforts in this role have helped establish a new city's art center, a community park, and a welcome center. She also founded the Butler Township Community Park, a one and a half acre space where gardeners can rent and maintain plots and learn about organic farming and sustainable agriculture. Krista is a proud Penn State alum, having earned a bachelor's degree in landscape architecture. She also holds a master's degree from Harvard University in urban planning and she has served this country as an officer in the U.S. Army. Ladies and gentlemen, Krista Schneider. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to be here. I can't believe it's been nearly 30 years since I sat in your seat. My goodness, time flies. <laughs> uh, it's an honor for me to take the next few minutes to congratulate you on your commencement. You did it. Great job. Uh, whether it took you two years, four years, so maybe longer, six, ten, who knows. Uh, <laughs> but you got your degree, and that is really, truly something to be proud of. 
But what are you going to do with your diploma? What are you going to do? Well, hopefully, uh, you're going to get a job, if you don't have one already, and a good one. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? Right? Getting a job and collecting a paycheck is great, but what are you going to do? What does that mean exactly, the word do? Well, do implies action. It implies, implies movement. A doer is a person who acts rather than merely thinks or talks. A college degree is great, especially a Penn State degree. It opens up many doors for you. It expands your opportunities, your horizons. Hopefully, it broadens your perspective and you know, you've learned some knowledge and skills along the way. But I'll tell you what your diploma is not. It is not a ticket on a high-speed train to success. You know what you got here today? You got a subway ticket. A pretty expensive one at that, <laughs> right? You got a subway ticket. And that subway has about 100 stops. And each stop provides you with choices to do something. Choices that will forever change the course of your life, for better or for worse. So which stops are you going to choose to get off and explore? And which ones are you going to choose to stay on and let pass by? Well, let me tell you which five stops, the five types of stops that I pay closest attention to, and the ones that I recommend you be on the lookout for as well, so that you recognize them when you see them right? Because you want to be able to identify them. The first stop to look out for, that's non-complacency. Doing nothing is still doing something. And sometimes it's really tempting to just stay on that train. But choosing not to speak out when you see something that isn't right, that is not just, that's not only complacency, it's complicitness. So if you see injustice, if you see discrimination, if you see abuse, dishonesty, get off that train and speak up. Many people did that last summer with the Black Lives Matter marches. Some of you did it by voting, perhaps for the very first time. So if you see someone struggling, lend a hand, lead by example. Also, don't get complacent thinking that you know everything. Now that you have a degree, you don't. I don't. No one does. Be humble about that. If you have an opportunity to, le to learn something new, take it, especially if it gets you off that comfy train. You know, you got you to gotta make yourself uncomfortable. Get off and explore. It's the only way to grow. The second stop, the second type of stop to look for, that's divisiveness. Us against them, right? We've seen that growing exponentially over the past few years in our politics. But it's everywhere, and it, it always has been. It's in our jobs, it's in our communities. Anywhere you find people, you're going to naturally find division. And people use divisiveness as a tool to gain power over others and over you. So left unchecked, it will do great harm. It's, it's like a cancer cell that metastasizes. So don't fall prey to it. It will be a distraction for you. Stay on the train instead. Be the person who seeks out common goals and objectives. Whatever I, whatever, what I've learned is that no matter how far apart someone may be um, politically or culturally, there's always something, it may be just one small thing, that can be agreed upon. And people will put aside their dif differences and actually work together if they believe they can achieve that common goal. So be on the lookout, find that one thing, and exploit it. <laughs> The third type of stop to look out for, this is, this is, these are one of my favorites, all right? These are tree planting opportunities. So what's a tree planting opportunity? Well, for me, it's been those times in my life where I have an opportunity that will do something to benefit others. There's a quote by Nelson Henderson. Uh, it says, plant a tree under whose shade you do not intend to sit. So let me say that again. Plant a tree under whose shade you do not intend to sit. That means that you're thinking about others, not just yourself. 
you have your mind on the future, not just the present. And if you have the opportunity to serve your community, whether it's by joining a, uh, a, a nonprofit organization, forming one of your own, volunteering for a cleanup, coaching a team, or even running for local government, go do it. Get involved and plant those trees. The fourth type of stop to look for, it's called great expectations. Or it's mirror image, which is actually a little bit more dangerous, and that's called expectations of greatness. So you did something great. Well, that's wonderful. But now you expect credit for it, or you expect to be rewarded for it. Don't get off at this stop. It will lead you astray. You know you did something great, and believe me, those who matter, they'll know that you did something great also. But be humble. Keep your head down and continue to do great things. But never do them for credit or for money. Find things that bring you joy in life and do them well. Do them exceptionally well. And everything else will fall into place. So trust me on that one. And the last stop to look for. Well, that's your destination. And it's called perfection. But it, you actually never reach it because it doesn't exist. And so you'll stay on that train forever, waiting for it, and maybe never even get off. You may have heard the saying, don't let perfection get in the way of progress. I live by that. <clears throat> Do what you can with what you have at the time. Now, I'm not saying don't have a plan. I have a plan for everything. I'm a planner both by nature and by vocation. So I always have my sights set on the horizon, and I know what I'm aiming for. But take the opportunity to celebrate small successes on your way to your destination and adjust your plan as needed, because that's what life is. It's a journey, not the destination. And if you don't, you know, you're gonna miss, you're gonna miss those small, meaningful opportunities to get off the train when you need to. And most importantly, to make meaningful differences along the way. So what do all these stops have in common? They are choices that you will make as your futures unfold. You got your train ticket. In fact, you're actually the conductor of your own subway car. <laughs> so now go out and do something. Do something. Do something great with your degree. Thank you. Thank you, Krista. I'm never going to think about a subway or a train in the same way again. <laughs> and now, would you all please rise for the Penn State alma mater? Please be seated. I want to congratulate each of our graduating students and offer my personal best wishes for future success. 
This ceremony and celebration represent a milestone in your academic career and in your personal quest for your future. I would, I would surmise that part of the reason you have been successful is that you are optimistic. You are optimistic about the power of higher education, you are optimistic about your future career, and you greatly value knowledge and how it can be a key to a productive global citizen. And now you know which train stop to get off. You have worked hard and been resilient in the face of adversity. You make us Penn State proud. As you leave this ceremony and campus today, please remember that you are now part of the legacy of the Hazleton campus at the Pennsylvania State University. You are always welcome here, and we hope that you visit us often. While we especially recognize our graduates this morning and celebrate their accomplishments, we also recognize that they could not have accomplished all they have without additional support. We would like to recognize and thank all that have supported our graduates today. Would all of the members of the Penn State Hazleton Council, our alumni, and the members of the faculty and staff, please rise, be recognized, and remain standing. Would all the guests of the graduates please rise, be recognized, and remain standing? Would all of the graduates please rise, be recognized, and remain standing? Thank you very much for helping us celebrate our 51st annual commencement at Penn State Hazleton. Following the recessional, please keep socially distanced and masked as you leave the event. We want everyone to remain safe. Thank you, and again for joining, thank you again for joining us, and have a good day. We are Penn State.